anything that's important to me, I have to, I like try to crystallize it in some kind of list. So I, I have all these manifestos. So I made a manifesto for listening with everything that I wanted to try to remind myself as I was engaging with other people. And as you say, especially with my husband, Jamie. So some of them are pretty obvious. Like when I'm listening to somebody like put down my book or my newspaper or my phone and like square my shoulders. So I'm facing the person, look at them so that I'm, I, I signal that I'm listening with my posture and with what I'm doing. I realize that one thing that I tend to do is that if the conversation tends to get too vulnerable or too uncomfortable, even before I realize it, I will quickly start steering it onto safer ground. So I really had to remind myself, you know, let awkward silences fall, paraphrase, you know, it sounds like that must've been angry or you must've been very frustrated to show that I'm, I understand or I'm trying to understand. My own particular quirk when things get touchy is I will rush in with a reading suggestion. I realize this is sort of my coping mechanism. You're getting a divorce. Oh, I have a great book about divorce for you to read. Oh, your child is struggling in school because of social issues. I have a great book to recommend about that. And again, this is like a way for me to get move the conversation into safer territory. But these people are not talking to me about a trouble because they want a reading list. Like they want to talk about it. So I've learned that I need to follow up by email later if there's books that I want to suggest, but in the moment, really just listen. When in doubt, stop talking. That's one of the hardest things I found to do. And here's something, um, a way to incorporate touch. Appropriately, of course, this doesn't work in every, every relationship, but when it's appropriate, if it's a difficult conversation, either because it's like a an upsetting conversation or it's just irritating because it's like logistics or something that's like, you know, irritating for couples to deal with. If I'm touching the person I'm talking to, if I'm holding my husband's hand or I've got my hand on his back or even like our knees are touching while we're both looking at our calendars, it's much easier to maintain a tender and affectionate atmosphere. It's just harder to be angry and um, sort of irritable with someone when you're touching them. And so it turns out that, there, that w- by reminding myself of all these sort of very practical things, it, it really helped me to become a better listener. But just as a side note, because sort of on this larger topic of like conflict among people, another sort of aspect, a related aspect of something that I really found to be true, and I found this like with all of my research into happiness, but it was just as true in, in the context of the five senses, is that often when people are arguing, they're saying, I'm right, you're wrong. But what they're talking about is preferences. And once you acknowledge that no one's right, no one's wrong, it's just a matter of preference. We're not trying to convince each other or persuade each other or win. It's just like, okay, how do we manage something where we have different preferences? So you like to have music playing in this office because you think that that fosters your creativity. But I like to have silence. If you show me a bunch of research about, oh, what helps people be productive? Oh, music without lyrics, that helps people to be productive. It's like, it doesn't matter. That is not my experience. It's not that you're right and I'm wrong. It's that we're different. Or you think, oh, I think it's great to have everything put away. Let's be minimal. Let's get rid of everything. That will help us have a calm, a peaceful home. And somebody's like, but I don't care about that. I like a little bit of clutter. I like a little buzz in collections. I like piles. I like having that around. It's not that one of us is right and one of us is wrong. We have different preferences. Oh, get up early in the morning. If something is important to you, do it first thing when you're fresh. No, I'm at my best late at night. That's when creativity flows. No one's right. No one's wrong. 40% of people are morning people. 30% of people are night people. Everybody else is in between. It's largely a matter of genetics and age. So I think often with conflict, people are trying to convince each other, I'm right, you're wrong. When in fact, it's like, nobody's right. Nobody's wrong you're right for you. I'm right for me. How do we work it out? And this comes up a lot with the five senses because people have very different preferences. 